first show here at the uh, Salamanca Casino. We have 300 tables in here, okay? So there's over 100 exhibitors, I don't know, maybe close to 150. But they vary from one table to, to several. So, and you can see our booths. We have some pretty neat things in there. Heck no. Um, I'm a knife collector and I've got knives from all over the world and some of my latest acquisitions are from the Blade Knife Show in Atlanta, Georgia and uh, I have a lot of custom knives as well with me. Uh, this particular knife it's made of uh, 512 layers of hammered steel, Damascus steel and since ivory is illegal now uh, this is from a hippopotamus's tooth the handle. So it's a very unique knife. Unlike this one here, it's from Germany, and this is a crown, it's called Crown Stag. Uh, some of my knives are made from handles from, uh, this is mammoth bone from the Ice Age. And you can have two knives, same pattern. But what determines the value of a knife is the handle, not the blade. Uh, people don't realize that. If you're comparing pearl with, uh, with bone or celluloid, pearl or stag is going to be worth a lot more than, than, than celluloid. Uh, some of these knives go back to World War II. And the steel, some of the best steel comes from the barbarian countries. This is probably 60-some years old, and it's from World War II. And just look at the steel. It's hard to find steel today that, that holds an edge like that. Uh, so this is an example of a custom-made knife. You've got pearl in the handle, handmade sheath. Some of the um, people at the knife show, what they did was they would take a knife like this, painted pony, and this was a buck knife. And he would rework it. He would take it all apart, back file it, file the blades, take out the handle material, and he'd put blood turquoise in and customize it. And this is a this is a knife from Painted Pony, and there's his emblem on there, and it's from the Atlanta Knife Show. Some of these are really special to me. This is really ivory and gold but pearl, and this is Swedish twisted Damascus steel. These are very expensive. My wife likes jewelry, so she buys jewelry. I like knives, they're like jewelry to me. Hello, my name is Clayton Ludwig of the Sonic Nation Conservation Department. I'm here promoting the new fish hatchery for the Seneca Nation. It was brought by a $200,000 grant by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. This will be the first year the fish hatcher will be open, and we're looking to produce about 800,000 fish in this first year alone. Over 100 lures in here. They're all polished, even right down to the hooks. And on this type of a tackle box, I'll get, uh, I want $500 for it. That's less than $10 a lure, because it is over 500, or over uh, 100. And I have two more tackle boxes that are under the table. Here is a homemade Bowie knife, made years ago. Homemade case, everything about it's homemade. It's a wonderful old piece of merchandise. Did you get that? Yeah. I'm Paul Schoenhardt from King Decoys. It's a collection of uh, hand-carved decoys that I've started uh, probably 20 years ago. And uh, I have a variety of uh, birds here, anywhere from Songbirds like this uh, uh, little chicken, uh, yellow, uh, yellow chickadee, to uh, uh, canvas back, a nice loon, loon with the little babies on it, uh, hooded merganser. So these uh, uh, decoys are, are made out of uh, basswood. I create, uh, start with a block of, of pure basswood, uh, sketch out a pattern on the top and the side, cut a rough cut out on a bandsaw, and then uh, Refine them a little bit further with uh, electric tools and burrs and, and uh, a Fordham tool. 
Uh, all of the decoys have all of the feather groups burned in, so there's literally thousands of burn, of burn strokes every time I uh, uh, create one of these little birds. And then uh, either paint the birds uh, using acrylic paints, or like in this grouse, this is a grouse is done with uh, uh, stains, all right? And uh, that's kind of a nice bird, and I uh, found this uh, hunk of wood in the woods and cleaned it up and put the bird on there, and it kind of looks kind of natural. So I also have some feather pins, uh, mallard, wood duck, woodcock, little pins. Ladies like them, put them on the lapels. I also have uh, unique turkey calls. Well, they're maybe not too unique to this area because uh, these turkey calls are made from the wing bone of a turkey, the three bones, just like an arm. One bone up here, and then we have two bones here. Turkey is essentially the same thing. You take the, bro the uh, uh, bone, the wing bones, uh, cut off the ends, ream out the marrow on the inside, boil them up, get that stuff out of there, clean them, paint them. So they look kind of nice. And uh, get some compliments from uh, hunters every once in a while. Come to the table, mention that they bought one, they used it, called it a bird or two, and it's a little bit of feedback. It's kind of nice. So the pheasant. A lot of work on this pheasant. I've always asked, how long does it take to do one of these birds? Well, a bird like this may take three to four months. Right? The same thing with this bird. Just all the little uh, miniatures, you can kick those out in a couple of weeks. So when you carve, you can't carve, go in the shop and carve for eight straight hours in a day. It's a little bit tedious, your eyes get tired. So I'll usually have two or three uh, pieces working at the same time. So you go in, you work on one bird for an hour or two hours, you stop, take a break, uh, hit you another bird that you're working on. So over the course of a day, you may put uh, three to five hours in, and that's about it. That's about all I can do. Then uh, take a break, come back the next day and see how things come out. So this is it, King Decoys. Uh, visit my website, kingdecoysnewyork.com. Uh, I'd to talk to you and answer any of your questions you have about the decorative decoys. I know Thank people you. come here will enjoy it because we're kind of neat.